everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of Life in Private Staffing. Hope you're all well. Hope you've all had a good couple of weeks. Um, really looking forward to talking to our guest this week. We have a, a really experienced house manager called Johnny on the show today. Um, we've just been talking loads before we even hit record. And I'm wishing that we just hit record before because we've got a lot to talk about because Johnny's uh, got a hotel background, transitions in, which is really interesting. I want to talk a bit more about that. Um, he's worked with various different families doing various different things. He's now between jobs and yeah, lots to talk about from uh, uh, the challenges he's experienced with his current job hunt, um, his current sort of CV format and how he wants to sort of look at that. And hopefully some of the stuff that we talk about today is relevant to some of the listeners and could potentially help you guys as well. So um, let's get straight into it then, Johnny. How are you? And welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm well, thanks. Good. So tell us where you're based at the moment. Uh, currently in St Albans in Hertfordshire, um, but keen to move back to London uh, as soon as I fix up a nice new role. So are you specifically, so you've obviously been working in the private sector, would you call yourself like a, you're a London house manager? Is that, is that where you want to be based? Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I'm, I've moved out of London temporarily and just, you know, once I've, once I've got something lined up, I'll be, I'll be back. Straight so. back. So how long have you been working in London for? Uh, for about 10 years now. All right, yeah. So you just can't imagine working out anywhere else. No, exactly. I think as well, like, as a house manager, the, the types of homes in London are obviously going to be different to the types of homes not in London. And the families must be very different. So it just must be, like, where you're just most comfortable. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel that's where, that's where my life is. I've also had roles that involve travel, so London's a good base for that. Yeah. Uh, some families, you know, they have inner city properties and then they have maybe a country house that they want to go to at the weekends um and you can often spend a few days or, or a week or so out there uh, so it, it, it's a good base for it gives you some variety yeah i agree some of the households we have recruited for out in the country are really rural so it does take a certain type of person to want to be out there all the time yeah and it's it's a different way of working you know yeah in central london you can there are apps you can use to send you know send you send somebody shopping for you and they'll appear at your door mm. in a few minutes what you need as an emergency and in the country you just that's impossible you can't do that you wait four days for your plumber right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah exactly okay cool so you, so you started your career in hotels was your hotels in london as well uh some of them yes yeah. so i started yeah. out i started out of london then moved into london uh, within hotels and then made the transition into uh, into private staff or private, okay. private households. So back in the hotel days, what were you doing within the hotels? I was a front of house manager. So okay. you know, I've always, been, always I've always been front of house, whether it's more on the F and B restaurant side or whether it's more the rooms and the reception side. Um, it's all about it's you know it's all about people for me. Yeah, and did you know much about the private sector whilst doing that? No, not at all. Mm. Really. Um, I, I, as we were just saying, I think I sort of moved in slightly by accident. Um, I left the last hotel I was working at because I, I joined the group to with the idea of moving to a, a larger new property that they were due to open, and then that fell through and it, it didn't happen. So I took some time off for myself. I went travelling, and then when I came back to London, I was looking at new opportunities and I was I was looking in hotels and uh, one of the one of the recruiters I was with said I've got this got this role it's probably worth you going for an interview it's a little bit different and she didn't really tell me a lot about it I think probably because she didn't really know a lot about it Um, Mm. but I went for an interview and it turned out to be a you know private house manager role and never looked back wow and um, when you started, wow, we were saying, again, saying this early, weren't we? Having never done it before, everyone's first job as a house manager, unless you've worked your way up within the house, if the house is new to you and the house role of house manager is new, it's just got to be mental because you, there's nothing can prepare you for your first house manager role in a brand new house. Yeah, it's, it, was about, it was certainly a baptism of fire. Um, the family that I was working for, it wasn't their full-time residence. They had multiple properties around the world. So they were sort of in and out all the time, which was more familiar to me coming from hotels. Yeah, of course. Um, 
but yeah, it was just the beginning of the summer period and they were coming over from Asia and the end of my first week they arrived, didn't leave for three months and it was mm -hmm. just full on like every, every day, a very intense period, but yeah, amazing experience. And one of the key things in this type of role is being a quick study and particularly about people, you learn individuals, preferences what they like what they don't like they won't always tell you they often don't no. it's up to yeah you to, to decipher, decipher that and that's even not even from family to family but individual members of the family as well you know the the main boss likes things one way and his mother likes things done another way and they don't agree so you're sort of <laughs> playing between the two of them and subtly trying to to make each person's experience the best you can yeah fair and so um, over the course of your experience or time in the private sector, you've you've had the uh, benefit or luxury, really, of working with multiple families, haven't you? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I have worked for a number of different families and they've been different styles of household, some more formal, some more informal, different nationalities. So that's sort of different cultures, mm. and different size of property, different levels of technology. So I've yeah, I've. I think I've been lucky to, to experience a wide range of of, um, of types of types of family and types of property. Well, you say you've been lucky, but equally that is also who you've chosen to work for. Because if you were, we have some candidates that are very uh, particular about the type of family they live, they want to work for. So some people don't want to work in a full time residence, for example, mm -hmm. or they uh, there are certain nationalities they don't want to work with. And all that does really is it doesn't broaden your experience, does it? Um, and actually putting yourself out there and being open to anyone and everyone means you're going to have roles that you prefer to other roles, but you're forced into just getting all, get, learning it all, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, one of the key attributes for this type of work is, is flexibility. That's a word that I, I always use talking about this uh, and, you know, being adaptable and it's, you know, no, everyone says, you know, no two days are the same. And that's just mm. so true in this type of work. Um, and yeah, I think it's important to be, to have that flexibility, not just in your sort of personal working um, actions, but, but in terms of understanding the family that you're working for and their needs and yeah. adapting to them. It's, they might do things that you think, no, no, that's not right. Or I don't recommend that, but, that's what they want so that's, yeah. what we, that's what we make happen you know I think that's one of the difficulties I think of work in the sector is you've kind of got to put your own opinion aside even if you think your opinion is a better one which we generally do um you yeah you just need to sort of like suck it up sometimes so are you, so are you never going to get back to hotels are you literally done now like are you fixed in the sector I think I think so yes I remember yeah. when I first made the transition um a lot of my friends from the hotel industry were were asking me, you know, oh, when, you know, are you going to come back to hotels? When are you coming back? And uh, the lo I think the longer, the longer I've, I've progressed within this industry, the, the less I see myself going back. Um, yeah. There's, there's, you know, there's some sort of key differences. Uh, it, it is a more volatile industry. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's, it's far more difficult to find the right fit. Yeah. Find that family that, 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 is right for you um but on the flip side you know there's you have a lot more autonomy there's um the variety is huge i mean you know you can be asked anything on any given day mm. um, you can be asked to travel at short notice um and the salaries are better but yeah you work very hard for it <laughs> yeah and you're on call all the time yeah yeah that that can be a challenge particularly for you know people in your in people in your life outside of the industry you know partners family friends who don't always understand that level of 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 service i guess and yeah you on call at funny hours um and one of you know that is one of the challenges because it's such a small team so mm. comparing it to hotels you work in a department you've got a deputy you've got staff and, and team members who can share the responsibility with you and if you go on holiday for a week you give them a handover and they'll cover yeah. for you. in a private house particularly in a in a more senior role like a household manager 
you're it. You know, you don't. Have yeah. It. So it's it, it, it. That's that is one of the um, one of the harder things. You know about about the industry. Yeah, we don't talk about that much, but the sacrifice is is mad. So like, if I try and imagine if my husband, for example, was a house manager. I'd be raging. There'd be so many situations where I'd be raging. So I'm like, you are not leaving me with the kids again. And he's <laughs> like, well, I've got to go to work. And so I can completely see the sacrifice that partners and families have to make because ultimately you're choosing your employer and their needs over your families at times, um, especially because then you're just going to be, there are times where you have to let people down and you can't do things and things. My brother's a house manager and like he's had to he's not gone on family holidays, for example, and the family still goes. And yes, he's the one that's lost out, but they've also lost out. So that is definitely, I think, something that one of the things that people that are thinking about coming to the industry need to bear in mind is um you need to be flexible, mm-hmm. isn't absolutely. it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think as well, the more senior you are in the house, the more of a the more uh, significant that point is as well because if the book stops with you and there's a flood in the night you're they're not going to be calling the sous chef are they? they're going to be calling you um oh, this always happens the light goes off in my office um and uh and so yeah but obviously I think the, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives are you, you I know she you must agree to have stayed where you are yeah no for sure um but yes it is a challenge and one of the other things that um you know being a a team leader or a house manager you know is is you're very aware of you want to provide the best service to your principals but you also want to look after your staff yeah so some of the more maybe the more junior staff they're coming to you and saying look i need this time off or i need mm. whatever it is and you're you've got a responsibility of care to them as an employer and you're representing your principal as their yeah. employer yeah you also you have to balance the the principal's needs and you know if you're constantly going to the boss saying you know this person needs time off this person needs time off and they're like well sorry yeah. that doesn't fit with my schedule yeah so it, it can be that can be a real a real delicate a delicate balance and a challenge um you are very much as a how you know as a house in a house manager role you are the filter from the staff through to the boss and then from the, you know, the, from the principals mm. down to the staff and everything goes through you, um, both ways. <laughs> yeah. And also like, it's so difficult I think in a private environment because you need everybody to be happy or at least seem happy just for the general atmosphere in the house. But obviously you can't please everybody all the time. So there must be situations where you're having to um, discipline junior staff or just give feedback or tell them no, they can't have a holiday. They're going to be raging, but it's, but none of this can be visible. So it's keeping that, uh, just not letting any of that affect the sort of atmosphere in the house. Like how what a delicate situation some of these are, isn't it? Uh, definitely, I you've got to be you've got to be a bit a, a pretty good diplomat, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's one you know one of the key attributes that you're looking for in any member of staff that you hire is is. Well, it's flexibility, but it's also having that understanding of the nature of this type of role. Yeah. It's not a nine to five. And essentially, you know, the principal's needs come first. Yeah. With, it, with, it, with, with you know, within reason. So yeah. you people who, who understand that and are prepared to, you know, to be adaptable in their own lives, to you know and hopefully you know in most you'd like to think that that some of some of the perks make up for the sacrifices that that everybody makes it's not always the case but you like you know you try and i think i think overall yeah i think overall the balance has got to be in the favor of otherwise people wouldn't continue doing it so there has to be overall more benefits than costs to doing this otherwise nobody would want to do it I mean, that's it's, it's not always the case, but you, you know, that's that's what we strive for. Yeah. yeah. Would you rather manage a house of thirty staff or three staff? Um, or ten. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, what's your I, what's your preferred I, environment? 
I was going to say something in between the two. So yeah, um, ten about right. Yeah, I mean, I've always preferred a, a you know on the smaller end of things. Um, it's it's a lot more. The, a smaller staff house tends to mean that you you have more interaction with the with the principals themselves. Yeah. Um, I know some of the like much larger estates where you've got you know 30, 40 staff. Majority of the time, you, you know, you're working with each other, but you don't have any. You know, the the principals are either they're not there very much, yeah. or they don't, you know you don't get to see them. And for me personally, I like to have that interaction. I like to provide that. It's a very much a personal service. Yeah. And so I prefer a, a smaller environment where I have that more that more interaction. Yeah, and I think That's you probably could. You're used to that. Um, Go Sorry, uh, that's one of the things I found moving from hotels to private households is that it was there were a lot of similarities from sort of you know um, hospitality uh, sector, but but it's on a much smaller scale and it's more personal. Uh, yeah, for me that that something you know something clicked and I it it, it seems to work for me. Um, so you would hate, therefore, some of the palaces we recruit for the Middle East. There's about 700 staff in one of the palaces you recruit for at the minute. Um, to, to a housekeeping team of like 180, uh, kitchen team of 200. So, like it's just mental, isn't it? That's like that's not even hotel. I mean, that's like big, oh, mad. Uh, yeah, that definitely suits some people. Um, yeah, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll be one of them either. Um, Okay, fab. And so let's talk a little bit about sort of like current day then. So you've been working in the sector for a little while, pandemic hit. Were you affected uh, professionally by the pandemic? Uh, I was very frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, I'd started a new role um, December 19. Um, and then, mm. you know, everything happened and it was a newly created role. So there was, we were in a period of figuring out what the nature of the role was going to be. And the long, you know, the longer that the pandemic went on and the working from home situation happened, uh, it they they decided not to continue with the role. It didn't work out. So mm. for me personally, very frustrating. Um, and obviously, in the last few months, it's been a challenge looking for a new role. The market has been well; it was very slow. Then it sort of picked up again, and then it's sort of gone down. And I've been put forward for quite a few roles, and then for no without really any explanation they've just been put on hold yeah we happening quite a lot um, yeah so yeah it's been a, it's been a challenging time yeah like and i've spoken to so many people that have been so severely affected and there's a lot of senior people as well because i think i feel like it's affected people for so many reasons but one of the main one of the main reasons is some of these principles will have you know three or four properties in the uk all fully staffed because they'll flip between them all and then they've just been residing in one and therefore, they've just not needed like three housefuls of tea, like three teams. Um, and they've just kept their sort of skeletal team there. Um, but then who's recruiting house managers during a pandemic? Is they're going to sneak anybody through the back door? It's going to be housekeepers or cooks or nannies, because that's really what's going to help their life more and more. But you know, if they have a house manager in their house, that house manager ain't going to go anywhere because where they're going to go to, even if they hate the job, they're not going to leave. And so therefore, the role's just not created. Uh, the role's not become vacant and then no new house manager roles being created because no properties are being bought or moved into all the rest. So it's been completely stagnant mm. for senior members of the house, which we've definitely seen. And then, yeah, this whole going on hold business, ugh, bane of our lives, is moving now. But the beginning, the minute there's been a release of lockdown, last summer in January time, oh yeah, let's get the ball rolling, let's recruit. And then all of a sudden, if lockdown's hit again, or if there's, it's all of a sudden on hold and it's just like, it's just a waste of everybody's time, um, apart from theirs. Yeah. Um, and it's also, you know, you have to realise in this industry that the people who are recruiting, you know, it's the family office, it's the PA, it's not an HR department, and that's their full-time focus. This is, yeah. sort of, you know, way down there, probably way down their priority list. Um, yeah. That's why it, the entire process is very slow, and it's slow to get feedback, it's slow to get an answer and I you know I'm off, I'm always chasing recruiters yeah and they saying I'm really sorry I just we haven't heard back from the client which yeah 
um is i know it's frustrating for you guys and it's even, yeah even more frustrating as a candidate yeah because us and the candidates like we're all on the sort of same side and and i think the candidates are always very aware that the recruiter is chasing like when you see a lot of recruiter bashing on linkedin where recruiters always go to me ah. it's like look if we could make money like we could place you like we're, we're, we're in this as well yeah. but um it's um yeah, it's just the feedback. Ultimately, I feel like good, the better recruiters out there are the recruiters that have a really strong relationship with the client and therefore the communication is open, yeah. even if it's no news, even just general updates. But it's those recruiters who have, don't have a very good relationship with the clients. This is why, I think I've talked about this before, I think it's mental when clients send a vacancy to five agencies or six agencies because we don't take the vacancy if that's the case. Because by ten, that immediately tells me you're not going to give me the time I need to work on this properly. Some some clients will email inquiries at Silver Swan, not even to anybody, just some to the agency. And um, we're looking for a housekeeper, please send CVs. And we're like, can we talk to you? No, I haven't got time to talk to you. Send your best housekeepers. Okay, where are you based? What are you paying? What's your house? Who are you? Oh, um, I'll send you information in a bit, and you'll get a WhatsApp with three bits of information. Which, whichever agencies work on those roles are at mental. <laughs> what, what is the point? What is a waste of time? So we, that's why we now only work exclusively with clients. We'll work with you, maybe one other agency, but because by having one or two agencies only means that you will have the time that we need mm. to work with you effectively. Um, and ghosting isn't an option. And ultimately, we get to a point, if a client isn't talking to us, we'll just call say, look, we're going to close the role. I'm not going to wait. We're going to close the role. I'm going to submit the candidate to somebody else. It's just... And it's just it's important for the candidates say that recruiters are a bit more confident in the way they deal with clients. Because if they tiptoe and scared around clients, the clients just push them around. Yeah. And then the candidates get pushed around. The recruiter needs to take control of the process for the benefit of the candidate. Anyway, I can run about this all day. It's such no, a no, I, I, I absolutely get what you're saying. And speaking both as a candidate and as an employer, um, yeah. having that relationship with the recruiter is so important. Yeah. From a candidate's point of view, well, I guess and on the flip side from a from an employer's point of view, you want you know, there's only so much you can get through a CV. And yeah. it can be you know, two pages, well presented, bullet points, you know, to, yeah. to the boxes. But you need somebody who knows the candidate and who can sell them to you or not yeah. you know, recommend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sell, it's sell, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, from a from a candidate's point of view, I rely on my recruiter yeah. to be an interview. That's what I'm, you know, you, you can't sell yourself through a piece of paper. No. And I know that if I get in the room and have a conversation, yeah, I will feel much more confident and positive that I can get across who I am, what I can bring to yeah. you. But you need, you're, you're totally reliant on the recruiter to get you in the room in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And so we're in that sort of middle place position and when we have a good relationship with our client it's just worth the client taking the time and effort to build a relationship because the benefit to them is in the future they can whatsapp me at 9 a.m on saturday morning say i need a housekeeper and that's all they have said me i know everything else i know that client so well monday morning they'll have four interviews lined up that's all that but so it does save them so much time in the future but they just don't see it but no. yeah and in, in, and you're so true because in this sector specifically it's all about on that fit the personality fit you could be the best housekeeper in the world, but you're just not going to be right in some, in some people's houses. And, you know, um, we touched on, we've talked before, haven't we, Johnny, about um, your situation at the moment because of the way your CV looks. Do you want to sort of talk a little bit about your sort of private career to date and how that now looks on paper and the problem well, that now causes you? <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, I as we touched on earlier, I, I've had, um, you know, a number of experiences with with different families uh some for sort of four years some for a couple, two years some only a year and you know you, you see a lot of job adverts out there and they put the minimum requirements you know you must have five plus years must have 10 plus years longevity in the in the same role which i feel for many many types of job is i'm sure is a good thing but Personally, I don't necessarily believe that's true in this case. You, as we, you know, as we said before, adaptability and flexibility is key. And having experienced different styles of household, 
different families from different countries with different uh, cultural um, needs. Yeah. Um, sorry, I've just got a call coming in. Uh, um, mm. You know, I, you learn. Loads. You learn, you learn, yes, you do. But you, yeah. what works for some households and what doesn't work. And so mm. for me, I think that the, 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 the broadness of my experience and having, ex, having worked for di- families of, of, from, from different places and in di- who, who are looking for different styles within their household, I bring all that experience to whoever, yeah. the, whoever the, yeah. next, the next role is. And, you know, you learn what works and what doesn't work. Uh, I once had someone who came to work for me who'd only worked in, you know, in a, a royal household for many, many years. And he just got completely thrown by mm. the inflexibility and the, the suddenness of how a day would, would change. He was used to yeah. a light, strict schedule that was followed down to the minute. And the fact that we were suddenly having a dinner party at 4 p.m., which hadn't been mm. hadn't planned before, you know, and that's a struggle. And that's like, well, I was like, well, that, this is normal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's such a funny thing, uh, this longevity sort of concept, because clients will bang about longevity. Firstly, I think it's a two-way street. I've talked about this on LinkedIn before. As a client who bang about longevity, they should be thinking about their own longevity as well with their staff. So whilst they're looking at your longevity, what they need to understand is the candidates are looking at their staff retention levels as well. And if you can't get hold, keep hold of your staff, like that's something you, you should be worrying about your own house and your own sort of thing, and don't worry about the longevity of candidates. So it's also difficult when um, people, are, clients are, you know, having longevity as a prerequisite because you may have worked in five households over the last five years, but left through absolutely no fault of your own and no nothing to, you could have been the best house manager they've ever had, but it's come to an end because they've moved house, they've got divorced, you know, they're going to a different country, whatever. And it's ever so difficult when, if you've been in positions that have ended after a short time they'd consider through no fault of your own. So then you end up a few years later with the short of level of employment that for some reason holding you back, which is stupid because you are far more experienced than someone who's been in the same world for five years because they have just been coasting and not learning anything new for five years. Yeah. And also, you know, it's such a working for a family as opposed to a company. Uh, it's such an, you know, it's such an individual personal thing. Yeah. Uh, if you, you know, I've met people who've, who've they've worked in, in one role for a long time. They know one way of doing things, which is how yeah. that family likes things done. Yeah. Then they move to another family and it's, it's totally different. Yeah. You know, it's, and it can be such a, it can be small things, but that the small things are what, are what makes us yeah. feel good. That's what the family are looking for. Yeah. So no, I do understand. I do see what the client says, obviously, that, yeah, you would do see what the client says in the sense that they don't want a member of staff to quit after 12, just keep quitting and moving job, job problems. I get that. But when the role ends naturally, so my, my advice to somebody who has done shorter stints than they'd like and on paper would look like they can't hold out a job, you know what I mean? And I'd just make it very, I'd always have a reason for leaving on every single job. So make it very, very clear for reason for leaving. And the other thing we talked about earlier before we started recording and something that I think Firstly, I think everybody should do now. Every private service professional applying for a job should do this, especially those that feel their CV is weaker than who they are. Do you know what I mean? Is um, start using video technology to represent yourself in job applications. We talked about this earlier. Um, Some people, not many people, people don't do it because they don't like doing it. But ultimately, the way the world is moving forward, and if your first edge interview is going to be on Zoom anyway, you may as well get comfortable at presenting yourself on Zoom. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, it's only going to go one way. Um, and I think if you can submit your CV alongside a um, introductory two-minute video, they will watch the video for sure before they read your CV. And that is a really good way for people to get to know you a little bit more and will probably read your CV in a different light having sort of done that. And I can imagine some people, there were, some people would open your video, listen to it, book an interview without looking at your CV. Other people, to be fair, will look at your video and choose not to interview you based on the video even if they might have done based on your cv but that is surely better all around because you're not wasting time coming to an interview do you know what i mean if it's going to be a no off the cuff um so um yeah and as you say it's so difficult because you want 
to speak to the principal directly about your experience, you'll get an interview that way. And if you get the interview, you'll get the job. But you've got this CV that you don't feel represents you fairly, going to a recruiter, trying to explain to them, and then trust the recruiter explains to them. It just makes it difficult, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, it's so, it's so much about personality. And that's, yeah. what, that's what you need to get across. And I agree with you, the video, I'm sure is, is more helpful than a piece of paper. But for me, an interview is, is yeah, the, of course. Is the conversation and it gives you a chance to really show who you are. And yeah. one of the things I have, I actually have had feedback on from previous interviews is, you, you know, you, you come across as, as relaxed, as friendly. You can mm. make them smile, make them laugh. Yeah. And, you know, not sort of too, people, a lot of people I've, I've met with, they don't what they're not actually looking for anything too formal yeah very and even you know certain high profile people a lot of candidates get on edge and they're very nervous and and stick to the formality and actually that's in your in your private house you don't want that you want someone and it's going to create a a welcoming you know nice environment um so that's what that's what an interview hopefully what allows you to, to get it allows you to do it's just getting through to the stage we're forever thinking trying to think of ways we can help combat this because it is a problem and we're the same problem like i know i know you really well and we you've been on our books for a little while i actually looked at my notes earlier 2017 was we, when we first started talking if you remember so a like, lot ages ago um but it, it really frustrates us as well um when our clients on interviewing the people that we tell them they should interview and it's like, um, you came to me wanting me to send you people to interview. I'm sending you people to interview, and I only interviewed one of them without giving any kind of feedback as to why you don't want the other ones. And it's just infuriating. And as we've talked about before, it's, it's infuriating because often it's not even the principal that we're talking to. It's like a PA, and then it's going to go to the business manager or the wealth manager, whatever. And then, do you know what I mean? And it's such a, it's just so tricky. And, it, and it's not so much of a problem in industries where personality is irrelevant. So if it's just a piece of paper, like if you want to be a lawyer, or an accountant, or a doctor, or whatever. It's just, can you do the job? But in this industry, like, and especially being in someone's home, that whole knowing the person a bit more, it's just so, so important. Um, As I touched on. on. For me, you know, and this sort of links into the various different experiences that I've had, we were just talking about. It's bits, you need somebody who is able to judge uh, the style of, of household you want you know and you can a lot of people you know they want they said they always say oh you know we're not too formal we like something more relaxed but you it's a fine line um, yeah you have to know a lot i've know i know people have fallen into the trap of being too relaxed and too yeah. friendly, too informal and there's a line you don't cross so that goes one way and then on the other way you know if they are having a dinner party or they're having important people over if you can do that for you know you can you can switch on the formality and represent them uh you know it's yeah you, you know ideally you've got to be able to do it all that's, that's do it all that's and also re- read the situation accurately exactly. exactly yeah yeah and also as well bear in mind like form relax to one principle could be very different to relax to a different principle 100 yeah. percent. so yeah you need to be there is a line but that line moves yeah from house to yeah. house to house exactly. yeah <laughs> you have to you know you have to be a diplomat you have to be a quick study in people yeah and yeah you get a sense of what works for them what doesn't what makes them uncomfortable yeah they we want to start you they won't go on much like in the recruitment side you know where feedback is is useful but it's not always uh available yeah principals won't necessarily tell you what what they like what they don't like yeah so you don't get that feedback you have to figure it out and that's that's part of the challenge of it um but it, it's an important part of of learning to fit into a household and if you don't figure out quick enough you'll lose your job because you're not the right fit and it's like if I'd have known I wasn't, I shouldn't be calling you mate. You should have said, or you should, yeah, they just get and re- read it wrong. Um, we want to start using video 
two ways as well. So what we think is quite good is we are definitely going to start using video technology to present our candidates to our clients. We're using a, 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 tool, a piece of software. So clients no longer receive emails with CVs, which doesn't do any favours. And it's also what all the agencies do, and it's totally boring. Um, they're going to receive a link, and they're going to log on. They're going to have their own sort of account, and they're going to have everyone's sort of videos uploaded there. So that's cool. But equally, what we think would be quite good to help candidates know what they're letting for themselves in for is when we take a job from a client, we want to record that. So you can have this, these meeting rooms. Um, we want to have a virtual meeting room with the client to discuss the vacancy and take the vacancy, which we record, which we then send to the candidate who's considering applying to that role. Because again, it's a waste of time. If you turn up to an interview, having spent four weeks fighting for a spot, and within, uh, within a, immediately, you're like, I don't like the feel of this house. Do you know what I mean? So that'd actually be quite useful, I think, for a candidate to have some kind of insight um, virtually to the family and just how they talk and who they are and how they're selling their job. Um, I just think it will help the process, just strengthen the process between candidate and client pre-interview stage. Sure. Well, yeah. um, We'll see anyway. It's going to be an experiment. Um, so let's sort of move on very, just to sort of wrap up a little bit. So when you are, obviously you're, you're sort of looking for your next role, but when you are in a role and you are recruiting and you're building your team, um, what is it you're looking for when you're employing new staff? What qualities are important to you? What, you know, how do you like people to sort of be presented, et cetera? What are you looking for? I mean, it's all about people and you have to, I'm looking for somebody who, and this is whatever role, whatever role it is, um, somebody who is 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 good with people. And you know, interviewing is a real it, it can be it's a real skill. Um, some people are better at it than others, but if you can if you can be relaxed enough to show yourself and give me a sense of your personality, um, you know that for me that's almost more key than. You know the, the bullet points on the piece of paper as to your yeah. experience um you want you know it, it's a very like we said you know being in somebody's house it's it's a very personal thing and even if you're in a role that perhaps the principal you don't necessarily get a lot of face time with the principals it will happen at some point and you want people who will will make that you know they'll make make them comfortable you don't want you know you, you want somebody who is good with people can can make you laugh if that's what you need or has the ability to to understand that actually they've had a bad day i'm just gonna mm. keep quiet and not disturb them um that's you know that's it's a very important important skill to have would you give somebody if i rang you knowing you're looking for a housekeeper i said look i've got a really good housekeeper but she's brand new to the industry she's been working in hotels and she's done a couple of luxury chalets which is great. Would you be open to considering someone new and giving them their first opportunity? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I mean, I obviously speak from my own experience, but coming from hotels into households is a good, it's a good Root. path mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly, you know, particularly with housekeeping, there are, you know, <laughs> a lot of the basic skills are the same. Uh, they won't always be to the same exacting levels. Um, mm -hmm. But that's why, you know, you can, if you have four candidates who have all been housekeepers elsewhere and have roughly the same experience, you are going to find, or you're, you're going to want to find the, the best personality for, that, yeah. for your household. Not necessarily, oh, they worked in this hotel as opposed to that hotel. It's, it's about the personality and finding the right fit for, for the family and for the team, because it's a... We work in a small team. We rely on each other. And mm. you know, I always say to people, you, whatever you're doing, you know, if your role is a chauffeur, I've had people who are they're very precious and they're like, no, no, I drive, this is what I do. Mm. It's like, no, no, that's that's not what in this type of work, in this type of team, we help each other out. And yeah. we're in periods where we're busier than other people in the team. And if if you know, if if they need help. I want somebody who's going to be prepared to roll their sleeves up and, and jump in, even if it's not specifically their job description. That's, you know, I, that's yeah. it's key. I don't know how this exists, but it definitely does. It still exists. You have those, it's not my job people. 
right. how are you still working in this sector when you've got a that's not my job attitude they I, do exist but it blows I, my mind I, I, they're still in I, work. I, I don't i've never understood that that's not it's totally the wrong mindset for, yeah. for, for this type of work yeah, exactly. And also, well, again, look back to like um, giving like giving people the opportunity because a lot of private households don't. A lot of private households, um, you have to have a work in a private house. And I'm blue in the face saying, why, 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 why? You could have a twenty year twenty year experienced housekeeper that could not do well for you at all. And actually, sometimes it's the ones that you least expect that you've given the chance to that can come in because they're so grateful for the opportunity. They know what chance they've got and they've got a lot to learn and they've got a lot of space to grow in their role, haven't you? Um, and you don't want to get someone that's like at their top peak of their developmental capacity and they're not going to grow anymore. Um, yeah, I love that. Like in, in my office here, I think once, two maybe, no, twice, twice out of everybody I've ever employed to work for me at Silver Swan, I've ever had any kind of recruitment experience. I always get people that haven't done recruitment before, but they know the sector really well and they understand our market. Um, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? And, you know, for me, as a as speaking, or jumping back to, to a candidate's position, for me, I, that's key. You know, I have talked to so many recruiters and you can, you can easily tell the ones who have some experience in the industry. Yeah. They get what you're talking about. And there are others who essentially a career recruiters and you know some of them are good but you know you can tell the ones who, who they don't quite get it yeah and, Especially know, it's 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 unique you, know, you have to you have to have done it to really fully understand it I think a hundred percent otherwise you're not going to understand all the sort of like quirks of the right. clients in there uh, yeah. and also like the, the differences in right I don't like we sort of said before like house managers between houses are so different so different the role so different yeah it's, it's a very sort of com complex market for sure yeah uh, and i think yeah, the, best you have the same job title but the experience the day-to-day -day experience between two different households can be so different yeah true um well look i can't believe that, that how much time has passed <laughs> um so to sort of wrap things up a little bit then so anyone listening that's looking for one of the best house managers available in london right now do reach out because you are available for interview and you will definitely be snapped up the minute the market moves again um so wrap things up a little bit then so what is it you, what why are you, why do you do what you do what is it you absolutely love what in the, with, you know working within the sector i mean really for me it's it's about service it's uh, the whole of hospitality whether it's hotels restaurants private households it's about you know, you're looking after people, giving them the best experience, making their lives better in whatever way you can. Um, and, you know, in the, in the private household industry, I love the variety. I love, you know, the, the spontaneity that comes with it. Um, the challenge of being creative, you know, you're, you are left to, to come up with things and you know you get all sorts of weird and wacky requests that really yeah it, they, they challenge you every day um and yes it's very hard work but it, it it can be very rewarding yeah i agree and i think so there's sort of those listeners that are sort of thinking about it i do think if you if, if that is a passion of yours the service side of things this could be an industry that could suit you ever so well um cool well thank you ever so much for joining me johnny uh Love thanks for taking thing. the time um no problem at all i'm sure we will stay in close contact and everything that we can anything that we can sort of do to help you we will um thank you once again to everyone listening um any questions any feedback any thoughts please do contact me at philippa at silversongrecruitment.com you can also connect with me on linkedin and i'll see you all in a couple of weeks cheers everyone